All right, welcome. Thanks for joining me in this video. I'm going to try and show you how I've got Mario's physics working. Uh, and in the last couple of videos, we took a look at how we could animate Mario, organize his animations, and then also detect the input of our keys. And now I want to show you how I can take that keyboard input and translate it into motion of Mario. So in order to do this, I'm going to start with just a quick little refresher of our physics. We're going to say here for, this is going to be my little uh, rendering of Mario, and let's say this is one of our, our frames of whatever animation we happen to be playing at the moment. And the way I'm going to be keeping track of Mario's position is we're going to be keeping track of this top left corner, and I'm going to call that Mario's position. And as is expected in a two-dimensional space, we'll be storing that position as two coordinates, an X and a Y coordinate. For Mario to move, we need to have him change his position over time, and a change of position over time is called a velocity. And we're actually going to also have a two-dimensional velocity, which is a velocity in the X direction, and then a velocity in the Y direction. And by applying maybe both at the same time, we can get Mario maybe doing a jump with an arc in it, something like that. You know, velocity in the Y position alone might give us a vertical jump and our normal walking, you know, left and right um, is going to be velocity in the X position. And then, as I mentioned already, we might also have both being applied at the same time. But we're going to see how both of these are applied. And what we need to do is actually add another dimension, which is the acceleration dimension. And even though we are going to be applying accelerations in the x and the y dimension, um, we are not going to be storing an acceleration uh, variable in Mario in the same way that we will be storing a position variable and a velocity variable that will be keeping track of Mario's position and velocity. Now, why is that? Could we include an acceleration uh, uh, vector as well? Certainly we could if we wanted to have a rate of acceleration where maybe we're accelerating faster and faster over time. Uh, but all of our acceleration in the Mario physics that we're going to be looking at is going to be static acceleration, which means the rate at which we accelerate is going to be fixed over time. And that means we don't need to go into higher dimensions of acceleration. In this case, we're done here. So these two we will explicitly store, which means inside my Mario, I'm actually going to have a this.x and a this.y, and then I'm also going to have a velocity vector that will have velocity.x and velocity.y. And again, as I mentioned, we won't actually have an acceleration vector. So how do we apply acceleration in the game? Well, let's just take a second here and let's think a little bit about how these different these different properties work in just normal physics. In normal physics, we might have a position, and you know, and, and once we get into science, we usually tend to rely on metrics. So let's assume that we've got that in sort of meters, and then we've got velocity is going to be our movement or our change in our position over time, and so we usually measure that in meters per second, um, or uh, maybe kilometers per hour if we're in a different a different range. And then if we want to measure our acceleration, then that's going to be measured in units of meters per second squared. Now, these are helpful when we're doing uh, acceleration in the real world, but in the in the virtual worlds or simulated worlds, we don't actually have true meters. You might in your game world, but Mario doesn't. Uh, instead, Mario has pixels and I guess if you like blocks. And so if we want to be talking about speeds or, or you know velocities or accelerations in Mario's world, we probably don't want to be talking about them in these units. And in fact, the units that I used to using is, are going to be pixels per second for my velocity. Why? Because seconds are a time frame that my brain is used to using and then pixels are something that is easier for me to characterize on the screen i can think to myself how fast exactly do i want this agent to move maybe i want it to be able to cover 100 pixels in one second then it's easy for me to write okay my speed whatever my speed property or variable is going to be i can just set it to 100 which is a nice easy 
unit to be working in. So that's the units I'm going to be using for Mario. I'm going to be trying to state his position in terms of pixels, where he is in how many pixels across the screen he might be, and then how fast he's moving based on how many pixels per second in either the X direction or the Y direction. So the next question might be then, well, how fast exactly does Mario move maybe, or how fast does Mario accelerate? How fast does he accelerate? And these questions are questions that I didn't really have the answers to. And since I'm trying to simulate or, or make a game uh, based off of another game, Super Mario Brothers, my goal here was to actually find the original values for the velocity and acceleration uh, vectors so that I can simulate them as closely as possible. So I took to the web and I tried to Google and find, you know, what, were the, what was the original velocity or speed for the original Super Mario Brothers? Now, one thing I found, I, I, I didn't find a lot of, of really good help, but I did find this one guide um, that is actually stored on this sort of Wayback Machine, which is, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in uh, down below here. Uh, but this is just an image that I found uh, exhaustively put together by user jdaster64, uh, whoever that is. Uh, is some type of a nerd. Um, but what this uh, user did was went to the actual code for Super Mario Brothers, the original one. And the original Super Mario Brothers code is in uh, assembly code, or at least this is the code that um, this user was able to get a, an assembly version, maybe a decompiled version of the original uh, Super Mario Brothers. And he went in there and he tried to figure out, okay, what are the actual variables you know, what are the actual magic numbers that were set in the original Super Mario Brothers? And he tried to figure out how the physics was set up. Now, the, the first points that he puts in here is that the units that were used in the original Super Mario Brothers were, um, he's got this set up here, blocks, pixels, sub-pixel, sub-sub-pixels, and sub-sub-sub-pixels. Now, because the original Super Mario Brothers was made in the 80s and they were likely operating in, uh, in some type of assembly code, they, the numbers that they were using were written in uh, binary or hexadecimal for simplicity. And so these, these sub-pixels, sub-sub-pixels and so on didn't operate in the metric way where there were 10 sub-pixels per pixel and so on. There were 16 sub-pixels per pixel and 16 sub sub pixels and so on. So this was truly in base 16, which means there's a little bit of translation that needs to be done to untranslate that. So the first thing that I had to do is I noticed that the numbers that this, that this um, document was giving me were in sub 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 pixels, which are incredibly very small units and I wanted to translate that into pixels of course so that was one thing I needed to do. The other thing that I that I need to mention here is that the actual time frame uh, wasn't in seconds it was in 1 60th of a second and I think I mentioned this in an earlier video 1 60th of a second is about how fast a, uh, an average monitor is going to be updating uh, and so the original Super Mario Brothers was going to try and update exactly 1 60th of a second. So all of its math, all of its physics were do done in calculations of these units of time, which uh, we could call ticks or frames, if you will. That's what uh, this document's calling them. Um, and again, I'm going to try and translate that into seconds. Seconds are easier for me to use. So all the values I need to hear, uh, take out of here, I need to translate now. I'm not going to go into all the details until we actually look at some of the code. But what you can see here is these are some values for some of Mario's um, uh, acceleration and velocity values. So for instance, the minimum walk vel velocity is this number. I'm not even going to read it out because this number is again in hexadecimal and it is in uh, sub 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 pixels. So it's 130 sub 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 pixels is the minimum walking velocity. Now that was 130 sub 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 pixels per tick or per 160th of a second. So we would have to multiply this by 60 to figure out how 
fast Mario can go in one second, which is the way that I want it. And of course you can see various other ones, max speed, uh, running speed, uh, walking acceleration, running acceleration, and so on. I'm not gonna go over all the details because we're about to go look at how I've implemented this in the code. But basically I've gone and I've grabbed the numbers out of this document, and then I've gone and converted it uh, just jumped into a Google Docs here and did a quick conversion and you can see here I've just got each each one of them and I've tried to convert them uh, into uh, the units I mentioned uh, pixels per second or pixels per second squared for the acceleration and deceleration vectors okay there are also some uh, uh, vertical uh, math here for gravity and so on uh, but I went ahead and I've, I've calculated them all out and I've gone and entered all of those values that I calculated in my spreadsheet in as just some constants into Mario. And I've actually just left them as constants inside Mario's update because Mario only needs these values inside of his update. And so I made a little comment here in my code, both a link to the, the document we were just looking at and just a little comment to myself while I've converted these. These are now in units of pixels and seconds. And so I've got my minimum walk, maximum walk, and so on, uh, different accelerations. Um, Mario has a very subtle physics in the original physics, uh, and Super Mario Brothers is quite famous for this original uh, uh, interesting physics. And so I wanted to implement it as closely as possible, and I think I've got it fairly closely, uh, uh, but I think there's still maybe a bug or two in there, and I'm going to try and uh, uh, change those. Um, as I finish my project here. Um, but let's just go in here and see the logic that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to, this is the logic that I came out. I'm not necessarily, it's not necessarily going to be the best. Um, uh, it might, I might have to refactor it or change it if I need to add something in here. Uh, and at the moment, uh, I'm only going to focus on the physics controlling Mario, accelerating him, uh, decelerating due to you know slowing down or gravity, but none of the collision dynamics that we're going to do. I'll save that for the next video or, or a later video. Now, a lot of what is going to be going on in this logic here is we need to detect two things. What is the current state of Mario? And two, what is the current state of the user input? So Mario, if, if left alone, Mario's state will evolve on its own if we're not pressing any inputs. However, if we are pressing inputs, we might be changing Mario's state. You know, we might start him jumping or start him moving and so on. And so these, this logic here is where we're going to be changing all of those variables in response to the user input or in, to, in response to the user not providing any input as well. So the first bit here is Mario has different ground physics than he has air physics. And so I've got that split into two different chunks. So this first one says if we're not jumping, then we're going to be doing ground physics. So the state variable keeps track of what state Mario currently is in. And that state is something like idle state, walking state, running state, jumping state, skidding state, and so on. So this one is checking is Mario not jumping. All right, now the next bit is I want to check what Mario's current speed is. So if Mario is currently not slower than the minimum walk variable, that, that was one of the constants we defined above, then one, if we're not pressing anything, I want Mario to stop. So the first bit here is Mario stop. This will put my velocity down to zero and it will also uh, change my state from walking or, or running, if that's the state I'm in, into the idle state, which is state zero. However, just because I'm going below the minimum walk doesn't mean I'm stopped. What happens if I'm moving, pressing in one of the directions? So here, this is checking to see, should I move to, should I be pressing to the left or should I be pressing to the right? What is the appropriate response? Well, in this case, we are now going to accelerate in the direction towards well, whichever direction we're, we are pressing. Now let's carefully look here at my first attempt at applying an acceleration. 
unlike my other cases where I'm going to apply an acceleration, this is going to be a faking of an acceleration or an instantaneous acceleration. I'll maybe just jump down below to point out a difference. Down below here, I'm applying my, my run acceleration and I'm multiplying it by the tick, which is the amount of time that has gone by since our last update. However, in this case, I'm not doing, I'm not doing any calculations related to the time. I'm instead setting the velocity to the minimum walk speed. So if I am below the minimum walk speed and I am pressing in some direction, instead of accelerating up to the minimum walk speed, I just set my speed to the minimum, minimum walk speed. The only difference between these two lines is that the direction left is minus and the direction uh, right is plus. And so after setting the velocity x to zero up above here. Here we will just be setting it to either minus the minimum walk speed or plus the minimum walk speed. If I'm not moving slower than a walk, then that means I am walking. Now, if I am walking or possibly running, then there are really four possible states that we could be in. I could be accelerating to the right and pushing to the right. I could be accelerating to the left and pushing to the left, or I could be going to the right and pushing to the left, pushing opposite direction, and then vice versa again. Maybe I'm moving to the left and I'm pushing to the right. There's one other possibility in there as well, I guess, which is I'm not pushing in any direction at all, in which case Mario will naturally slow down if you stop pushing in the direction that he's moving. So again, if we're moving faster than a walk, then I'm going to do some checking based on which way I'm going. Now, I have another variable here called facing, which tells me which way I'm going. Facing equals zero means I'm facing right. So this first check here is if I'm facing right, and as you'll see next, and I'm pressing right and not pressing left. So why, why did I add this extra bit about not pressing left? Well, in the original Super Mario Brothers or on the original Nintendo Entertainment System you had a d-pad and when you're pressing left on the d-pad you can't be pressing right on the d-pad it's just not possible and so I wanted to make sure here on my keyboard you can press left and right at the same time well I didn't want it to respond you know the real answer here is I don't know what you should what Mario should do if you're pressing right and left at the same time probably nothing probably just stay where where Mario is or probably have no input that's another way of saying that is this a undefined input or a broken input we don't know what that is so I'm going to try and ignore that here I'm just going to say if I'm pressing right and not pressing left then I'm going to accelerate to the right now you, to the right here because it's plus equals okay now there's actually two different ones here in Mario's physics, if you are pressing the B button, we used to call this the B run button because when you press B, you would B run, which would be you will accelerate faster. There are two acceleration rates defined in that Mario document that I copied the, the numbers out of. The acceleration when Mario is running, pressing the B button, and the acceleration when Mario is walking, not pressing the B button. So the only thing I've done here is I said, okay, I'm facing right, I'm also pressing right, and I'm pressing B, then it's the run acceleration. If I'm not pressing B, then it's the walk acceleration. The only other thing I want to add here is how I'm using the tick value here inside my calculation. First, I just want to go up to the top of the, the update function here and, and recognize that the tick is just this clock tick that we set in the game engine. Every time the game engine gets its next uh, tick, basically, it will ask the timer how long it's been since the last time we did an update, and it will record it in this variable clock tick. Now, I've gone and just alias that with this uh, constant here, tick, partly because that just saves me from doing two dot operations every time I'm going to use it, and I end up using it a lot down below here, so I want to save myself a little bit of little bit of uh, operations there. So now how am I putting it and bringing it to bear here? Remember that this acceleration here is in units of pixels per second squared. All right. So I want to know how fast, how much I should increase my velocity based on the amount of time that has passed. Well, tick tells me how much time has passed in seconds. So by multiplying it by my acceleration value, 
that will give me how much I should increase my velocity for the last sliver of time that we're talking about, that last sliver of time, of course, being the last tick. So this will increase my velocity by however much it should be. Let's, let's do a little bit of brain math here for a second to make it easy. Let's imagine that the tick was one second. Now, in our game, it probably won't be one second. But if we imagine it's one second, that's easy for us to do the math because then we just add the acceleration value on to our velocity, to our x. Okay. Now, more likely, tick is small, like I mentioned before, like 1 60th of a second. So it's more likely we're getting a sliver of the acceleration added on to our velocity x here. And that might actually be good because if we do take a quick look here, what is our acceleration run? Our acceleration run is 200, this says 200 pixels per second squared. Meaning if we were accelerating at a run for one whole second, at the end we would be going 200 point something something here uh, pixels per second. Now that is actually faster than our max run speed. We can see here the max run speed is 153 and three quarters pixels per second. And so what this is telling us, if we're doing a little brain math in here, we're saying that Mario, if we're running Mario, Mario will reach his maximum running speed in less than a second with his acceleration vector set at this particular speed. So that's all we did there. Now let's just go down and check our logic and make sure other things make sense. Um, maybe I'll just skip down here. If I'm facing left and pressing left, I do the exact same thing. Okay, except what? Minuses here instead of pluses up above that we did here. Now I skipped over this other logic. What's the other logic? Well, this is if I'm pressing in the opposite direction now. So remember, facing zero equals right. This means we're pressing left. So I'm facing right and I'm pressing left. Then I'm going to use the skidding deceleration. Now again, this was a cool, subtle thing that was built into the original Super Mario Brothers, which was skidding. I'm running and I'm actually moving in one direction, but I'm trying to press in the other direction. And of course, you know, Mario has that cool little skidding animation. So because of that, um, I actually step, set my state to three, which is my skidding state in Mario. So this tells this, setting my state to three, is telling my animator down below, do the, do the skidding animation now because we're actually skidding. Now that's if I'm pressing in the left direction. It doesn't matter if I'm pressing the B button or not when I'm skidding. I always skid at the same rate. If I'm not skidding though, if I'm, if I'm facing right, I'm not pressing right and I'm not pressing left. So I'm not pressing in the direction I'm moving and I'm not pressing in the opposite direction. That means I'm not pressing either direction, in which case I should still decelerate at a normal deceleration rate, which is, which is a slower deceleration rate than the skidding rate up above. And in this case, I'm not actually skidding, so I don't change my state. Uh, you'll just sort of see Mario slowly slow down as he walks. The exact same logic is down here for skidding and slowing down if you're facing left or moving in the left direction. So hopefully this, this little block is not, um, there's nothing surprising there. Now the next bit here, this is applying the gravity of Mario. Now Mario, Mario's gravity in the original Super Mario Brothers is a little bit weird because it depends on the last jump you did. So to do that, to simulate that, I've given Mario a property called fall acceleration that actually changes. As you can see down here, it will change to one of these different constants depending on different factors in the game. Now, again, that's because of some subtleties, how Mario works. You, if you're developing your own physics for your own game, you might not want to add all these little subtleties into your game as well. But this little logic that I've got here is going to respond to Mario or, or the user pressing the A button, which is the jump button. And since we're in the ground physics part of Mario's logic here, this is pressing the jump button when Mario's on the ground. Well, that's when Mario's allowed to jump. Mario, at least in the original one, doesn't have a jump, double jump ability, and therefore we should only trigger a jump if we are on the ground, which is what's happening here. And then, uh, the way that Mario jumps is the, the height 
to which Mario jumps depends on two things. One, how fast Mario was moving originally. The idea here being a running jump will be better or higher than a uh, standing jump or a slow walking jump. Uh, so what we actually have here is this, this line here. We have three different cases here, but in each case, I set my Y velocity to minus 240. Now remember, minus in the Y dimension in, in the canvas and on the web is up. So jumps are, are negative velocity, not positive. That'll jump you down. And so we're going to jump up. What we're doing here is applying an instantaneous acceleration to Mario when he jumps by just immediately setting his Y velocity to whatever value we want to set it to. In this case, minus 240 pixels per second. Or if he happened to be doing a running jump, he will, uh, he will jump up at minus 300. Now, the other thing I mentioned was how fast Mario falls depends on his last jump. And so here's where we're going to set that fall um, gravity, fall gravity. This is weird. You would expect all gravity in your world to be the same no matter what, no matter who you are or what you're doing. Um, that's how it works in the normal, in the real world. Uh, but in Mario's world, it, it is not that way. And so Mario's fall acceleration is different. And again, because I want to mimic Mario's world as, as closely as possible, I've gone ahead and done that as well. Now, the last bit here is setting the state to four, which is setting the state to the jumping state. Okay, now we're entering into the else block. This is the else from up above where we did the ground physics. So now we're in air physics. So if we get enter in this block, this means that Mario is in the air. If Mario is in the air, um, he, there's not as much that we need to calculate because we can't control Mario as, as well when we're in the air. Uh, one important thing we can do when we're in the air, as we are still jumping up, and this is, again, if you've played the original Super Mario Brothers, you probably know this. If you hold the jump button down while you are jumping, going up, you can jump higher. And the way this is actually implemented in the game is that while you're holding down A, the gravity is less than it normally is. So now remember up above here, I just set my fall acceleration to be one of these three. Well, I need to know which one I am when I'm jumping here to change my acceleration. Again, this is one of those subtleties. It's probably something you wouldn't want to implement in a modern game, but it is something I need to do to mimic the original Super Mario Brothers. So I've done something really bizarre here and it's a little bit weird. I don't want to set the fall acceleration to a different value because the fall acceleration has to stay uh, at what it is for Mario's uh, physics to work properly. So instead what I do here is I'm going to say, well, I've got three other accelerations here. Um, the acceleration you would get if you uh, were pressing A, if you were pressing A, or if you were pressing A. And so what I'm doing here is because I'm going to apply Mario's fall acceleration no matter what to Mario, I'm going to have to uh, cancel out some of that fall acceleration here a little bit a little sliver of each one um, before I apply the fall acceleration so let me say that again in a different way to make it uh, clear um, right here on this line I'm going to apply Mario's full fall acceleration and so if Mario or if the user is actually play, pressing A, I'm not supposed to give the full fall acceleration. I'm supposed to give only say, let's say half of it. It's, it's not half, but let's say it's half. Then what I'm doing on these three lines is I'm, I'm artificially bumping Mario's velocity up by a little bit. So when I go and knock it down by a little bit here, I've knocked it down by the appropriate amount. Okay, so again, all this is a little bit of finicky logic to deal with the fact that while holding A, Mario should be jumping higher. Okay, the other thing we have here is just the horizontal physics, which is really the exact same physics that we applied up here. You know, am I, which way am I facing and, and, and which way am I pressing, except the horizontal physics is a lot uh, simpler, uh, which is there, the B button doesn't do anything in the horizontal physics. And the speed to which that, that we accelerate or decelerate is going to be the same no matter which way we're facing. So if I'm facing right and I press right, I will accelerate 
uh, right in the same uh, at the same rate as if I was facing left and pressing right. I would also accelerate right in that same rate. So here is my horizontal physics. I've got what happens if I'm pressing right, what happens if I'm pressing left, and then what happens if I'm not pressing anything. Well, if you're in the air and you're not pressing anything, nothing happens. There's no automatic deceleration for Mario when he's in the air. He will just continue traveling at his same rate while on his jump. Okay, and now we're getting into some of the final things we do. So everything up above, I was changing Mario's acceleration, maybe, or sorry, not his acceleration. He doesn't have an acceleration, but I was changing his velocity based on maybe pressing my buttons, uh, maybe he was jumping and so on. So by changing those velocities, there's the possibility that Mario starts moving faster than we want him to do. And so usually in most games, we're gonna have maximum rates of, of speed for whatever tra traversals you might be doing. Mario can fall, so he has a max fall, and Mario has a uh, run, max run as well. So I've applied the max run and the max fall here, basically just comparing the velocity of the, of the appropriate value against my maximum run or max fall, uh, or max walk here. Um, if we're not pressing the B button, then we can't run, uh, we're not running, so we, we're not using the max run velocity to, to calculate it. We use the max walk. And basically, the, all these checks are doing is if you exceed it, if you're going higher than it, we just truncate you down. Now, again, this is very close to what the original Mario does, but not exactly what the original Mario does. And in fact, if you stop pressing the B button um, when you are running, I, I, if I recall correctly, Mario will continue running for a few ticks. Uh, I didn't want to build that little delay in there. So some of the, the absolute finest detail subtleties I've not yet built into Mario's physics, but I have built in these ones here. Now, the absolute last thing we do is we're going to now apply what we've done up above. We've take, All we've done is changed Mario's velocity. We've not actually changed Mario's position yet. And so that's the last thing that we're going to do. And that's what these two lines here are going to do. They're going to update the X position and Y position by doing what we were doing above. We were doing this above with the velocity vector by plussing or minusing off some sliver multiply or, or some value rather multiplied by a tick, which gives us the little sliver. We're gonna do the same thing here now using the velocity. Remember the velocity is gonna tell us how many pixels per second I should move. The tick tells me how many seconds it's been, and remember it's probably a fraction of a second. So that will give us a little sliver of the velocity and add it to our X position, which will move us in that direction for however long that tick has been. The only difference I've added here that I didn't have up above is all of my game world logic is done in single pixels, but the actual game world that I draw, and I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, is three times bigger than that. So I have three, every pixel is a three by three pixel instead, because otherwise Mario would look very small. And so the last thing I've done here is made sure that when I move my, when I move Mario along, I actually move him by the actual pixels, the, the triple pixels, the three pixels that he needs to move by. So my, param, my params.scale here is just a constant that I've set that is uh, set to three. And in fact, this is a good time to bring this up. Uh, I'll just switch over to my utility, um, my utility uh, file here where I've got this one uh, constant uh, global variable. Uh, you've probably heard global variables are bad and guess what, they are. So you shouldn't use them, but I do. I use them a lot. Um, and But to avoid the problems that you get with global variables, often there are global parameters like this where I want to set my debug flag to be true or false, or I might want to change my scale, or in this case I've also set my bit width, which is basically how wide a block is in the Mario world, which is 16 bits or 16 pixels. Um, and I actually add one extra one on here called block width, which is just uh, I calculate it after the fact, which is just gonna be three times 16. You can see I calculate that right here uh, after, the, after the page has loaded. But the purpose of keeping my uh, 
globals all in one object here called params or parameters or something like that is so that I don't clog up my global namespace with a whole bunch of variable names. Instead, I only have one variable name in my namespace called params and inside of it I have all my other global variables. So all of them have their names inside there and that that's why you'll see inside my code as we're looking at different places. You'll see these little params showing up. Well, these are just parameters, global parameters that I want to be able to set. And so I gather them together in this params object. All right, after this line here, we've updated Mario's X and Y position. So Mario's moved. We are done. The only next thing I do here, you see, is I update my BB. What's that? That's my bounding box. That's something that tells Mario that where Mario knows where Mario is. Because after this, we're going to check to see, all right, Mario, after moving, did you collide into anything? Did you land? Did you squish a Goomba? Did you pick up a uh, magic mushroom? Any of the things you might have done are going to be handled in this collision. I'm going to leave collision detection and collision handling for a later video. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in that next video.